All right, and welcome back, everyone, to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. So, I said previously in some of the uh, U.S. videos that I was going to uh, change up my upload schedule, and I was going to uh, change up a few things. I have decided that I'm going to start a second campaign that I'll be uploading on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then the American campaign will maintain its slot on slots on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the reason for this is because um, given the, the playtesting that I've done, I've learned a lot about the patch. I've learned a lot of things that are going on within the game as of right now. And I, unfortunately, the American campaign is kind of meh at best. Um, there's, a, there's a few issues with it because of the way I played it. Um, whereas with a new campaign, I can start from the beginning doing what I should do, and then at that point in time, everything's kosher. So my plan is to play this campaign and then have the American campaign continue on top of it and just have five uploads a week. Uh, technically, I'll have seven uploads a week because I will be doing Ultimate General American Civil, uh, or American uh, Revolution as well on top of the American campaign. So you'll have two videos on Tuesday and Thursdays to look forward to. And... Here we go as the French. So the French uh, start in a very strong position. This is right before the scramble for, uh, or, or okay, it's it's not right before. It's it's basically the work up to the scramble for Africa. Um, we do have the largest number of holdings in Africa as of right now. Um, the British are just right behind us with the Germans <clears throat> coming in at third. Uh, and then, of course, the Italians have control of Eritrea and uh, Somaliland, and uh, eventually they'll try to play, make a play for Ethiopia. Uh, Western Sahara is, of course, under the control of the Spanish, but the Spanish, if we can get lucky and get a invasion of Mauritania going and get southern Algeria as well, we'll basically cut them off. They won't be able to expand. <coughs> I apologize. I had to cough for a second. Uh, and they won't be able to expand into Africa at all. So if we can get lucky, we'll be able to get that. Uh, goals for the campaign. Um, <laughs> there's only one goal. There's only one. 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 Yeah, no, we're uh, we're gonna work towards killing the uh, Germans. Um, we're we're going to we're going to uh, embrace the eternal rivalry between the French and the Germans, and. That's going to be our main focus. We're not going to try to go to war with them immediately because they do start on good footing. So if we come over here to politics real quick, they have the second strongest Navy right out of the gate. Uh, we don't actually have a Navy right now because we, we I, I custom build everything because I hate the generator. Um, but we will be focusing on preparing to fight the Germans. Uh, but... First and foremost, we uh, start with some negative relations with the Austrians. And the Austrians are a much easier uh, country to take out early, so we can just get rid of them, than the Germans. Uh, they The Austrians only have one province, Croatia, with ports. And while it is a pretty hard target to take early, if you can manage to do it, before the 1900s, 1910s, it will give us the ability to knock them out. Um, we can probably scramble to eat up the individual provinces after we take Croatia, because then uh, the nation will collapse because they lose all their ports. Which, uh, hear me out, Game Labs, that was a bad design decision. It should be a case of the country remains, but they can't do anything on the seas and then you know that that's how it should be that uh, personal opinion but it is what it is so uh let's go ahead and set the things up start prepping for our eventual ascension to greatness uh so we're going to uh early on we're going to be focusing hull strengthening armor quality and big guns big guns we want to try to get up to uh, basically 11 inch guns, uh, 10 inch guns is fine, but Mark II 11 inch would be, uh, the best, uh, to get early, um, armor quality. We want to get to Harvey armor as fast as possible. Um, the faster we get to that, the better, um, 
basically the weight savings from Harvey Steele from Nickel Plate is so huge that it, it really does make it easier to be able to build ships. Yes, your ships are more expensive earlier, but the protection and the weight savings are well worth it. And then hull strengthening, of course, because we want to get to dreadnoughts as fast as possible. If we are good, uh, we should be able to get to hull strengthening. I would say uh, we should be able to get to dreadnoughts by... 1895, 1896, somewhere in that region. Um, let's go ahead and design our ships. Now, the French have some in interesting uh, ship designs um, overall, and they're actually like quite weird, in my opinion, but I, I like them. Uh, you know, of course, the whole joke, floating hotels and shit like that. So let's go ahead and plop that in there. Let's go ahead and get this in there. And then we'll fit in our funnels like so. Okay, cool. Uh, there's the start of our ship right there. Very easy. I actually really like this. And then we're going to go with, uh, since we're researching Mark II 9-inch guns first, we're going to go ahead and put 9-inch guns on this first ship. And then with, with these ships, because you're able to position the uh, uh, secondary tower as far forward as you are, you're able to fit a third gun on these ships pretty easily, so it actually increases the firepower of the ship immensely. And then we're going to go ahead and throw some 6-inch guns on the barbettes here, and then we will throw some 2-inch guns into the towers. So the French towers are actually kind of interesting in that they do hold a lot of 2-inch guns like this. Um, and when you get Mark II two-inch guns, you can actually fit all four guns on this top mast here um, very easily. So it's actually a really, really cool situation for that. And then we'll do our two-inch casement guns here. Um, I could go three-inch, but I'm, I'm just going to go two for uh, these early ships just to save on the weight. Um, and then we can go 18 knots, which is very nice. Very, very nice. Let's max out the range. Um, this will hamper the weight a little bit, so we might need to cut, uh, cut some things down, um, but we'll get it figured out. Uh, do, 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 do. Son of a bitch. I hate that. Uh, yeah, I forget, I forget to click off of that when I'm typing buttons and then it fucks it up. Uh, okay, so we're actually going to go with four inch guns on these barbettes here just to save a little extra weight. I would love to have the six inch guns, but we're just not gonna be able to do that with this size of ship. And wait, can I fit anything in here? No, okay. All right, uh, let's retry this. See if we can max out the range. If I can't, then it is what it is. It'll be fine. All right, and then if we can max out the uh, two-inch guns, that's very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and just pump these up as high as we can. Uh, we'll just do 4.2 then. All right, so there's our battleship, our starting battleship, I should say. Uh, just bristling with a bunch of secondaries, which will help uh, quite a bit. But the, the, the main advantage of this design is the fact that it has 
three main battery guns rather than the traditional two that you would get normally with other nations. <clears throat> now, the, the one exception to that is actually, funny enough, the Chinese. The uh, turret ship can actually get... Uh, so you can get two centerline 9-inch guns, and then you can get the side 9-inch guns. So you can actually get quite a few <laughs> main main battery guns on the uh, on the uh, on that ship. It's very very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at armored cruiser. Um, we got 4,000 tons on the armored cruiser. We can get 19.5 out of this. It's going to be relatively lightly armed for a heavy cruiser but we will work with it let's get that in there let's get that there and then let's go ahead and put on a few funnels okay and then centerline guns we're going to go ahead and do hold on i gotta kind of play with this in order to get it actually centered all right and then the same same thing with these is the fact that you can get that. And then uh, I like to put a single barrel on the sides just to add an extra six inch gun, which then I like to then put. Uh, let's go let's go lighter on the secondary uh, secondaries. We'll go two inch guns. Um, so you get a good amount of firepower overall. And actually, you know what? Because we're lacking. Uh, the the tech four uh, four dual barrels we're actually gonna go singles on these um, save some weight um, we we're not gonna suffer the uh, double barrel penalties from it um, just kind of give us give us a better better situation to deal with uh, for uh, heavy cruisers so let's go like that go standard. All right, and then belt armor, let's try to do 4-2, and then half-inch deck, half-inch superstructure, how high can we get this, 4.3, let's just go 4, uh, 1, 1, all right, so... If we cut down that, we can do that. And then we can jump these up to 2.9. Drop down the range a little more. Okay. We can add on the inner belt like so. And on, honestly speaking, this is probably the best we can get out of 4,000 tons. Um, you know, she's decently armed. She's not a slouch. She can definitely put out some damage um, with those six inch guns. So we're definitely looking good with that. She's short range, but they're more meant as a defensive thing early than they are an offensive thing. And then in the case of cruisers, we're going to go ahead and get the torpedo cruiser, my normal torpedo cruiser build that I do. So let's go ahead. Um, for those who might not realize, the minimal tower four is better than the front tower one um across the board <laughs> so uh i recommend using this over this <laughs> and then let's go ahead get some funnels boom 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 and then we're going to go ahead and just bristle this thing with four inch guns all right, so, and again, this thing is, it's meant to be a Gatling gun. It's meant to just absolutely put out damage and just make everybody's life a living hell. Um, what's the speed that we can get out of this? 19.5. And then cut that down. Oh, wait. Uh, huh. Can we manage it? That's the question. Oh, wait. The, t the armor on these turrets is absolutely freaking ridiculous. I That's that's where all the... Yeah, French French turrets 
they have some of the highest armor in the uh, game out the gate, so that's that's where all of our weight was going was the armor on those. And then we'll do that. Do that. Um, we don't have the weight to put a citadel on these, which is fine. Can we manage that? Yes, we can. Okay, so we're we're pulling we're pulling decent range for these. Um, but these are these are meant to be our colonial cruisers for the most part. Our heavy cruisers are the ones that, uh, uh, being attached to help the battleships for the most part. There will be some light cruisers, but not not many. It'll be like two. Um, but as we get upgrades, we'll be able to really, really boost this thing quite a bit. So we'll go like that. And then the torpedo boat. Now, uh, originally I was not using torpedo boats, uh, in the early game whatsoever. Um, I have since, uh, <laughs> obtained a new look at life when it comes to torpedo boats. Um, they're actually kind of necessary. Uh, they they offer so much in the way of colonial uh, protection that it's it's actually kind of necessary to use them quite a bit. Um, so let's go ahead and throw those two on there. Okay. Boom. Okay. So yeah, you might look at this thing and be like, "What the hell is the point?" And you would be correct. You know, most people would be wondering what the hell but in reality there's there's kind of a big deal behind this um let's reposition these guns like so and then that balances out the weight quite a bit so we like that and then there's nothing really to change we can pump these up to 2.9 inch guns um to really get the damage out of them uh for two inch guns early game going to full 2.9 is is pretty pretty big okay so there's our fleet uh battleship heavy cruiser light cruiser torpedo boat and then when it comes to the disposition across the board uh we want to put a torpedo we, we want to put a couple torpedo boats in every port that we have um it's kind of it's kind of imperative that we have ships all over the place and we have a lot of colonial holdings so um we will we will definitely have to make sure that happens let's go ahead and start by how many battleships can we get we can get four battleships right out the gate um we want to do that it, it kind of sucks but it's kind of necessary um let's go ahead and put one uh two in la harve uh, this is our main port for northern France. It's also one of our biggest ports. And then in southern France, let's go ahead and use Marseille as the main port, the big one. Okay, so we'll put them in Marseille. The, it's actually really funny. I had somebody look at me and like, do you mean Marsala? The fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> it was it was I, I i i twitched my eye twitched a little bit i was like um excuse me uh let's just build as many of these as we can so we'll go to an even number so 18 and then we're literally just gonna go down the line just placing these things Now, the reason why you want to do this is that in order for the port of a uh, province to grow, it requires having some form of ship in the uh, in the port itself. So you have to have something in those ports in order to make it work uh, or in order to make it grow. And it's really important as you get into the later game to be able to position larger destroyers abroad, you have to have those ports growing. So positioning a cheap little torpedo boat there. Uh, in this case, I do two because two torpedo boats working together is actually quite dangerous. Um, but that's why I always position a couple torpedo boats in my far flung places just to make sure, hey, cool, we can uh, grow this over time. And when we get to the heavier stuff, we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead, do that. Boom. And then go ahead and turn all these guys to limited. 
which then our finances are growing as a result. We're still maxed out on transport capacity, maxed out on tech budget, and we're looking pretty spiffy. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and start building more torpedo boats because I have a problem. Uh, okay, so we're still in the green. Let's just keep positioning these guys. We have a lot of holdings, so we're going to have a lot of torpedo boats. And then eventually a lot of destroyers. <laughs> a lot. Um, so, uh, battleship-wise, our battleships are... Um, we're, we're not going to be trying to expand too quickly. Um, you know, we need to grow the economy. We need to build up our Navy. We need to, you know, we, we, we got some steps that we have to do first. So slowly but surely, we'll get there. I think by the end of 1892, we should be ready to, um, if I can manage my economy well enough, we should be in a good-ish position. So we will see as we get there. So let's go ahead and queue up a couple heavy cruisers. We're going to put these guys in uh, Brest. So what you want to do in the new patch is you want to use your heavy cruisers to supplement your battleships. So you, you, you're kind of limited on how many battleships you can build. Um, early at least. Later in the game, not so much, but early on, you, you, you're you somewhat limited. So what you want is you want to use your heavy cruisers to supplement the number of battleships you have by offering heavier firepower for those ships. So it's kind of a, a big thing to make sure that you're building a decent number of heavy cruisers as well. And then we just keep growing the economy and we just keep building stuff. And we keep going from there. Um, let's go ahead and queue up a couple. Uh, let's let's queue up a couple more of these bad boys, so we can just keep going down the list. Because the faster we get these done, the less we have to worry about them. <clears throat> do 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 do. All right, research. Um, so we do have Mark II nine-inch guns as well so we'll be able to refit our battleships that we currently have uh, with those new guns and then let's queue up some more torpedo boats <laughs> more torpedo boats needed sir uh, okay uh, yeah, we'll just do them every turn by four. Uh, okay, so, so do, 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 do. And as you can see, like we like like right here, this is the all these torpedoes went into our main holdings, and so we we're we have a lot of holdings that we have to garrison, <laughs> a lot. So. It's going to be a while uh, before we finish building the torpedo boats, unfortunately. But our economy is growing at over 1% per fucking month. Holy shit. Um, we started with this. We fucking started with this. Now, our, our, our naval budget's actually low. Like, our naval budget, we should be... We, sh we really want to be over 4.5 right now. <laughs> so our, our naval budget's actually lower than what we would want. <laughs> but... You know, we're make we're making a lot of economic development every month. So I'll take it. Uh do 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 keep on garrisoning these. Uh, actually, I might be able to queue up two more. Yeah, boy. Let's go. All right. Awesome. Uh, I 
we're probably going to have a hundred torpedo boats to be honest, to completely honest, to be completely honest, we're going to hit, like, we're going to probably have like a hundred of these fuckers running around. Um, now what I personally do, and this is just for me is I tend to get to the, uh, when I first come out the gate, 270 ton, 75 ton, uh, torpedo boat, boom, done. There you go. And then it's the torpedo boat destroyers that I start building for my fleets because torpedo boat destroyers, um, depending on the size, uh, uh, can have, uh, mine sweeping equipment. So that's, that's how I like to do that on a personal basis is in that format. So let's get a few more rolling. We have so many torpedo boats in queue. <laughs> we have so many. But hey, I, I, I like seeing the uh, the ridiculous number of them just, just because it's funny. It's like, this makes us look a lot bigger on paper than, than we really are. Um, all right, and then we can queue up another six of these bad boys. Liberville. How many ports do we have left? One after this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two times ten, I need twenty more torpedo boats. So we'll end up around the seventy-ish mark or something like that. All right, so there's Battleship 1 unlocked. Um, what does Battleship 1 look like? Is it still one of the uh, hotel-looking motherfuckers? Uh, oh, wait, we already had this one unlocked. Never mind. That's actually what we used for, for the St. Louis. Um, so, never mind. I don't know why it said we unlocked it. Unless we're supposed to have the Ironclads, and we're not supposed to start with Battleship 1. Who knows? It might be a bug. All right. And queue up more torpedo boats. Because that's what we do here. We queue up torpedo boats. Uh, that put us in a de not, not big of a deficit. Actually, we queued up 12 there. What would happen if I queued up eight more? How much of a dev... Oh, oh, that's nothing. Never mind. Okay, well, cool. We'll finish up doing the garrison stuff with these. And this gives us a presence in every single sea zone that we have a connection to. Um... Which is actually quite beneficial overall for your economic development. Uh, did I overcount? I must have overcounted. Oh no, I missed tunas. Okay, there we go. Cool. We're good. All right. And that finishes up those. So how many torpedo boats did we end up with? Uh, 66. <laughs> All total. Holy Christ. Um, 66 torpedo boats uh, being being underway. That's a little nuts, but hey, I like it. So let's just go ahead and keep uh, developing our economy. These torpedo boats, as they finish up, will... It, we, you, you guys have seen how many have queued up with how much money we're making right now. We're, we've got a lot of monthly balance tied up or monthly income tied up in uh, those torpedo boats right now. So it's going to lead to us being able to really ramp up fleet production um, as time goes on. All right, so <clears throat> three months until those finish. We have five months left on our torpedo boat program. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yes, we will 
Uh, yes, we will take that. Okay, cool. So a little more income, a little, a little uh, bashy bashy with the Austrians. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and start queuing up some light cruiser. Oh, wait, we can't because we don't have the funds. That's fine. All right, let's queue up a couple light cruisers and uh, we'll start putting, uh, let's start with La Havre. So we'll put two light cruisers, two heavy cruisers with uh, the battleships and then we'll have four battleships. So four battleships, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers. That'll be our standard fleet complement uh, for the short, uh, for a short time. Let's go ahead and queue up two more light cruisers. Um, again, the light cruisers are just there to act as an escort. The heavy cruisers are there to deal damage with the battleships. Which then gives us a distinct advantage. And Egypt is rising up, which is pretty normal. Um, let's go ahead and just take that because I do not... Do not want more problems. Uh, we're going to take that. So we're building cruisers anyways. And I don't know, honestly speaking, I don't know if there's a if there's a penalty involved with uh, not doing what that mission says or what that event says. But I don't care because I'm building cruisers anyways. So, <laughs> um, and once all these torpedo boats are done building, then we will be able to start working on the next two battleships as well. An absolute absurd number of torpedo boats. I love it. Um, so we'll start... Uh, these finish in two months? Okay, so we'll start the... Uh, torpedo... Are the... Actually, we might be able to start these now. Eh, yeah, I got the money. I was like, I was kind of hesitating on it because I'm like, eh, do I really want to do that? But I got the money. Um, because we are going to build, uh, we, we're going to have to build up the fleet extensively in order to challenge the Austrians uh, for, a, uh, for Croatia. Um, so we'll probably build a second fleet in Nice or uh, Toulon. Which one's bigger? Nice is uh, bigger. So we'll build there. And then we'll probably we'll put another fleet in uh, La Rochelle. And so these two fleets will operate this way. These two fleets will operate this way. And then when we attack the Austrians, we'll bring them all together and march them into there. So we'll have a total of uh, four, eight, 12, 16 battleships. So 16 battleships right out, uh, you know, initially. And then from there, we'll continue on. Now, I don't plan on overbuilding the St. Louis. Um, I plan on waiting until we get the next bigger battleship before I build the further eight battleships. But I'm going to build four more battleships to, uh, to make up these two fleets, first and foremost. All right, and those are commissioning. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and queue up uh, two more heavy cruisers. Go ahead and put that in La Havre, like so. And then damn near, damn near <laughs> put us back into the positive with the commissioning of those torpedo boats that's pretty nice um so we're sitting at an act active fleet 72 ships four battleships two heavy cruisers 66 torpedo boats <laughs> um but yes so now these these ports will start growing little by little um and then eventually we'll start putting heavier ships in them as time goes on and then at that point in time we'll have a good day um 
we got three months until this finishes. We get Experimental Battleship 1. I don't remember which one that is. And then we have Nickel Steel coming online in four months uh, as well. So uh, 1892, we will... Uh, uh, yeah, January of 1892, we will start building the bigger battleships. Um, that Because Experimental Battleship 1, I believe, is uh, 15,000 or something like that. I think it's 15,000 ton. <clears throat> Alright, so we are... Okay, and then we can queue up... Let's queue up a couple more heavy cruisers. Put these in Marseille. We can, we can play around with our deficit a little bit. Um, we're just trying to get the home fleets built up because the, the colonial fleets are, they're not going to be too important early on. Uh, you know, they're just, let's go ahead and increase tensions with them on that because we want to, we, we want those tensions with the Austrians. We want to, we want to kill the Austrians. <laughs> I don't, the the Germans are, are going to get their comeuppance, but I want to kill the Austrians first. Um, we have 68 months on Rangefinder. I'm thinking I'm going to swap off this. 12 months. <sighs> Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. We'll just roll like that. Oh god, I just realized the time on the episode. I do apologize. Um but yes, we are going to get rolling here very soon uh again i plan on trying to get the fleet put together like 1896 is basically my goal to be declaring war on the austrians so anyways guys i'll talk to you later have a good one